Okay. Next speaker is Aaron Wong, and he'll be speaking on geoengineering marine strata cumulus to increase cloud albedo. Thank you. Yeah, after uh, last night's discussion, I'll tell you a chance to uh, try to a little bit. Hope that the next time you feel a little bit better. <laughs> and by the way, my name is Phil Rush. <laughs> and uh, in this study, we use uh, process modeling to uh, test the idea of enhancing wind cloud albedo using seawater spray. So it's this idea uh, falls into the broad category of solar radiation management. So back, back to uh, 1990, uh, Lesson and Smith demonstrated a negative feedback process in which an uh, increase in wind speed uh, as a possible result of uh, atmospheric warming can produce more sea particles that can increase cloud data and cold air. And later on, they proposed uh, adding submicron sea particles from the ocean surface in a controlled manner and uh, to do the uh, job. And uh, each, uh, in response to this idea, Fred had uh, demonstrated a uh, wind fusion uh, spray vessel that can produce sea particles to increase the product number concentration by, by about um, 200 per cubic centimeter, ideally. And this idea has been uh, evaluated by a few global modeling studies, but um, we feel that uh, we still need to use, need to, uh, use in process modeling to understand the transport of injected particles and uh, the physical and dynamical processes associated with uh, uh, interactions with clouds. So that's one of the motivations. Then um, we have seen this kind of uh, satellite image just uh, a few times, and uh, also we see that ship ship exhaust can modify the marine state of cumulus cloud uh, data, but not always. And even in one time, uh, one snapshot like this, you see that those uh, those uh, ship tracks are not identical and. Uh, I believe that there still are some other ships under this cloud, but they don't, they don't produce effects. So um, this, this uh, the modification of new cybercriminal cloud or video by ship exhaust is totally unpredictable at this moment. So uh, we use uh, the weather research and the forecasting model to set up it as cloud scale modeling. And with the horizontal grid space of 300 meters and vertical 30 meters, and uh, the domain size is pretty uh, large compared to some traditional large eddy simulations, 60 by 120 kilometers. And the simulation time is 30 hours to cover uh, one final cycle. Uh, after all, we need to we care more about the change uh, throughout our video in the day, not in an, at night. So we use the two moments microphysics. Um, but Bill uh, mentioned that in this, we call this uh, being emulating microphysics. Uh, actually, we use uh, beam microphysics to produce lookup tables for condition and equations and beam, the, the best sedimentation. So that we can still have a, a pretty uh, computationally uh, efficient. So for more details about the uh, model configuration and some other about the microphysics, I would like to refer you to some of the papers uh, related uh, we published uh, recently. And the initial condition, we use um, the Dicom's two measurements. There are two cases, one is uh, pretty dry, the other is wet, and the two references that uh, uh, show the, the intercomposition set up. And so, um, so in the most experiments, uh, we consider two different sounding and uh, three different uh, background, uh, the pre-existing CCN number concentration. So the combination of the, these two uh, conditions give, uh, gives, gives uh, four cases. So one first is weakly precipitating case, and then relatively strongly precipitating case, and then non-precipitating wet case and non-precipitating dry case. 
who also want to examine if the distribution of those uh, injected assets can impact the results significantly. So we, for each case, we run uh, four simulations with uh, the injection of uh, assets uh, uniformly from the surface, or by three sprayers, uh, one, one sprayer and uh, for the baseline uh, no seeding. But uh, for the other three, uh, for the three different uh, methods, we keep the, the domain uh, flags, emission flags, the constant. So first quick uh, result, uh, this, this shows the flag or data at three different times. On the left is the baseline for the weekly uh, precipitation case, and on the right hand side is the uniform injection. You see that it's, the result is perfect. Um, uh, it's, uh, a little bit of uh, uh, injection can uh, prevent the subcinous deck uh, from uh, opening. Now, if you look at uh, uh, if we inject air uh, by sprayers, this is this uh, three sprayer case, and uh, the, it is not that uh, efficient. And by one, is uh, a little bit worse. So, uh, but you still can clearly see the, the shipwreck like feature. So, uh, the message is that the distribution of sprayers and the magnitude of the flags matters. If you compare the, so because the, the sprayer, uh, moves from the, the left, left hand side of the domain to the right hand side, always on the left hand side the concentration is higher, because it, it moves, um, about six hours to move from one side of the domain to the other. So, if you have, so, uh, on the left, left hand side, the, the concentration is always higher. So, this is the, the more quantitative result, uh, the time series of uh, the total particle number rate and the liquid water path and cloud are video. Um, you can see that by injecting airsoft into the domain, you can prevent uh, pretty significantly reduce the precipitation overall, so, so that it uh, changes the cellular structure. So this, um, the, the in impact on the liquid water path and the cloud are uh, is pretty robust. Then, if you look at the strongly, one of the strongly precipitating case, uh, the cloud are bitter and cloud cover increased, but not that much. Um, and the overall cloud cellular structure doesn't change. If you look at the, if we inject the air by about just one sprayer, um, we see pretty similar results, but um, we clearly see the, the peering of clouds beside the track. That's what uh, Dan was shown yesterday. And uh, similar for three sprayers, you also see the clear um, in between uh, the sprayers. Then uh, the, the quantitative results are the time series of this uh, ideal cross reaction. And I think the one point I want to make is that uh, by uh, towards the end of the simulation, the clean, the very clean, initially very clean case uh, changed to uh, Super limited, uh, super clean uh, condition. So in that case, uh, the injection is very effective. Then for the originally very polluted case, non precipitating the visually, there's no difference in a part or data. Then by one sprayer, you barely see some evidence in the middle, a little bit enhancement in the part or data. Then uh, the overall there's not that uh, much of change. Then for the non precipitating dry case, again, it's quite boring, it uh, looks the same. And by one sprayer, uh, interestingly, we see the clearing of clouds along the track in the middle of the domain. And overall, uh, increase uh, is not that much. So, in summary, um, from the process modeling, uh, a four groups of simulations, uh, 
we found that uh, the ESTA injection is pretty effective in enhancing main stratocumulus cloud albedo in a um, weekly precipitating regime where an influx of aerosol can prevent the formation of precipitation. So that can change the overall cloud morphology and uh, the, the cloud cellular structure. And also it's pretty effective in the first precipitation regime. When CCN are highly depleted by the environment, uh, by the uh, precipitation and the environment, but the environment is still very conducive to cloud formation. So in that case, you see this uh, inject a little bit of aerosol and the cloud will pop up. And um, it is uh, relatively uh, effective in strongly precipitating regime. A reasonable amount of injection cannot stop or at least significantly uh, weaken the precipitation. In that case, uh, the injection is ineffective. Then uh, also, if, if the cloud, if the environment is orange and very polluted, then it adds more aerosol wouldn't change much. Also, in a very dry regime, it, uh, it turns out to be at the water vapor limited. So, the, best, the background aerosol are not all activated. If you add more CCM, one change. And also, the other message is that an injection method is pretty critical, but is um, uh, based on the simulations, not just uh, the perfect, uh, perfect feeding, the uniform injection is not always the best. And uh, it's kind of the balance uh, between area coverage of by injected aerosol and uh, the enhancement in the number concentration. So it's kind of the balance. Okay, with that, I stop. Thank you. Jim? So a little clarification here, early statement. You said there were probably a lot of ships out there that aren't making the trade-offs. The result of the mass in 1994, maybe the result was it's the fuel. You know, nuclear carriers do not produce ship tracks, and other Navy ships that run on gas turbine engines, which run on essentially jet fuel, don't produce hardly any ship tracks. And so, it's pretty, so that's probably a lot of it. And it's going to be very interesting when they change the fuel to see what happens. Yeah. But you got to remember that stuff's going out there all the time. It's not just for ship tracks. Yes, but one of the main conclusions for the mass experiment that uh, the ship tracks need, uh, depends on the environment, the environment condition, the ship tracks are not always from in the same yeah, condition. Yeah. 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 Yes? So, I don't know, my other question, I have a question about the radius that I would think of the... Oh, the size? The size? The size? Uh, so in Stata at all, they propose to inject the, the, the system of particles at the uniform size at 0.8 micrometers. But in this study, we, for the simplicity of activation, we still assume that it's the, the, the normal distribution with the mean radius, mean diameter at about 0.2 micrometers. Okay, one more question, Ismail. Turbulence. 
Uh, within like 15 minutes, you can reach the immersion phase horizontally, but it depends on the, the, the background again. And um, about the second question, uh, because in this, in this part of the cumulus regime, the inversion is very strong. Most airports are like not 100%, 99% are still within the boundary layer. Okay, thank you very much. Um,